guys, it's Sadie here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing a video on the do's and don'ts of owning axolotls. Just for anyone who might be wanting to own an axolotl and wants to learn some stuff about them, this video is for that. But as always, it's always important to do a lot of research as well. Not just watching this video, just doing your own independent research as well. It's always a good idea. But this video will give you a little bit of a guide of like the basic do's and don'ts for axolotls. Basically, I'm gonna say something that you shouldn't do and then follow it up with something that you can do instead. And also if you want you can check out my merch shop where you can get some XL merch like this or some other animal designs as well in the description below. So the first one is don't get a tank that's too small with no enrichment. Which might sound kind of obvious but you know when you first get an XL, if you get a baby one especially they are very very tiny but XLs get pretty big. They usually adults end up about like 30 centimeters sometimes even bigger sometimes a little bit smaller but they do get pretty long so it is really important they do have enough space in your tank for XL to be comfortable. They aren't the most active animals but they do swim around usually at night and stuff so they do need enough space for that the best recommended size for just one axolotl is a 60 centimeter long tank that's 30 centimeter wide so there isn't necessarily a specific like gallon tank that you need as long as it's 60 centimeters long that's like the most important thing um, so I think the tank I have it's I think around 65 liters which is I think around 17 gallons but you know sometimes you can get tanks that are still that size but they're not as wide so yeah it needs to be at least 60 centimeters wide that's the most important thing and then if you want to have two axolotls about 30 gallons and then if you want three usually you add like another like 15 or 20 gallons it's really important that they have a lot of space since they are pretty big another thing is that I do see a lot of tanks sometimes that just kind of have like nothing in it and axolotls don't really need a lot but there is some things that they still really benefit from now obviously you can't have your tank to be too crowded they can injure themselves if you have like sharp decorations and stuff so you do have to be careful of that kind of stuff but they still need things like tunnels um, and I honestly think that like putting in driftwood in like all x little tanks is a good idea because my ex little at least she really likes to climb she'll climb her big piece of driftwood and climb on her plants and climb on her hammock so I think it's a good idea to put in like a nice piece of driftwood if you can I think it just kind of provides a bit of enrichment something to climb you know and you definitely need to have a tunnel or two if you want um, although if you have more than one ex little you'll need more than one tunnel of course um, so they can all have their own tunnels because they do kind of like to just like hide in the tunnel if they want to or to get away from the light because they are sensitive to light so you don't need to have harsh lighting or anything like that. I do have some lights in my tank and they're just kind of these like little LED strips and they're pretty dim but I mainly just use them when I'm taking videos or photos of her. I usually just don't turn them on because she doesn't really need them. So don't get too small of a tank with no enrichment but do get an appropriate size tank for however many axles you have and safe enrichment like tunnels, driftwood, plants, etc. Next one is don't use harmful items in the tank. Now this is talking about a few different things because there are quite a few things in the market that are harmful axolotls that you might not know of. For example like gravel, coloured sand, small ornaments and a lot of fish water products. For example a stress coat. So gravel I think most people hopefully should know by now. I mean I saw some people using it to be honest but gravel is very dangerous to have in axolotls tank because they choke on it. I constantly I constantly see like from vet accounts that I they follow doing x-rays and axolotls and their bellies are just full of gravel that they've swallowed. Um, they have to actually do an operation to get it out. Sometimes they get lucky and they pass it through but a lot of the time they need surgery because gravel gets stuck in them. So please don't use gravel. Um, it's very dangerous for them. I did get some comments in one of my videos asking me about, I think it was called like exo gravel. I don't remember what it was called. This stuff is also not safe even though it says it is. I've seen posts of it get stuck in axolotl stomachs as well so please don't use that either. Um, and also some sands are unsafe as well. Uh, like black sand is unsafe because it has iron in it but if you get lucky you could potentially find some without iron but you have to run a magnet over it to make sure and if anything sticks to it then it's not safe. As well as like coloured sand. Most sand that has like bright colours are unsafe. The best one I recommend is white silica sand. That's what I use in my tank. 
or you can just go bare bottom that's fine too you don't have to have sand or you could do very large like river rocks that's fine um, as long as the rocks are like double the size of your axolotl's head they should be fine double the size you hear that because even if it's like the same size as their head sometimes they can still swallow it or they can choke on it so it has to be double the size of their head do research anything before you add something in the tank if you're unsure if it's safe or not now sometimes this can be hard because it can come up with different results uh, and different opinions but if you're unsure just don't use it there's most like fish products that are made for fish aren't safe for axolotls because axolotls aren't fish and they don't have scales their skin is very sensitive so there's so many things that you can't use so if you're unsure just don't use it stress coat for example is very unsafe because it contains aloe vera which is very harmful to axolotls but it's safe for regular fish as well as things like algae fix i mean that's not even really safe for a lot of fish too but that's very unsafe for axolotls um, and many other things um, the best things i would recommend is using prime water conditioner to treat your water um, and if you have a sick axolotl to use uh, indian almond leaf and also i think on like extreme cases of having a sick axolotl methylene blue is safe to use but obviously it's only if your axolotl is like really sick or something i think it's a really good idea to like join some axolotl like local facebook groups because you can find a lot of good information on there and if you're unsure about something you can post about it and i'm sure a lot of people will be able to tell you if it's safe or not because it's full people who have experience with them so i would definitely recommend that even if you don't like facebook i kind of hate facebook but I have found that the axolotl groups, the fish groups, all the animal groups that I'm in are actually really helpful. I'm even in like animal groups for animals that I don't own just because it's really interesting. I, I feel like you learn a lot more things when you're in a group with people who like own the animals, you know what I mean? So don't use harmful things in your tank or things you're unsure about, but do research those items and make sure something's safe before putting it in your tank. The next one is don't put any other fish or animals in with your axolotl. So it is unsafe to house fish, snails, etc. with your axolotl. It doesn't matter what fish it is, whether that's goldfish or like plecos, tropical fish, whatever kind of fish or even snail is unsafe to house with axolotls. They just cause way too much of a risk to damage your axolotl. There is a lot of pictures online of axolotls that have been hurt by those animals. I will insert some pictures. The least graphic ones I can find I'll insert because I have seen some graphic ones. I won't put those ones in there. Uh, fish will nip at axolotls. They can nip at their gills, nip at their limbs, etc. And then like snails and like fish that are like plecos and stuff can actually like eat the axolotl slime coat off which is very dangerous. You don't want their slime coat to come off. That's that's what they need to protect themselves. And I see a lot of people getting plecos for their axolotl tanks because they're cleaner fish so they help clean the tank. Yeah, don't do that please. It probably will only make your tank more dirty because they poop a lot and also it could damage your axolotl. Another thing is axolotls will probably try and eat them and most fish aren't safe for them to eat. Like goldfish aren't a safe feeder fish and then potentially the axolotl could even choke on them. So there's just way too much of a risk of something horrible happening that it's just not a good idea to do it at all. And obviously not tropical fish either because axolotls are cold water animals and it would be a bit cruel to put tropical fish in a cold water tank where they won't be able to thrive and be happy. And also, um, axolotls are already like pretty messy. They do pretty big poops and then they get it all over the tank. Uh, that it's just putting another species like of animal in the tank, creating even more mess. It's just a bit too much. Axolotls really prefer having um, low flow filters. So having a like goldfish in there that need like powerful filters because they're so messy, like it just yeah it just doesn't really go well for many reasons that it's just not worth it at all. But what you can do is either just house your axolotl alone. They aren't social animals. They don't have to be in like pairs or anything. Um, or you can just have another axolotl friend in there with them. Um, although I would recommend that you have the same genders together. I don't think it's a good idea to have a male and female together unless of course you are an experienced breeder and you know that they're like not related and also you have time to separate them because axolotls breed a lot and if you have a male and female living together all the time likely it will overbreed the female and exhaust her and then you might end up with a ton of babies that are quite hard to care for and then they could be inbred as well which you don't want at all so yeah just try and have two of the same genders together if you do have axolotls together next one is don't feed harmful food to your axolotl now i remember when i was first like researching about axolotls before i even owned any whenever i was looking get food on a lot of websites they would often recommend a lot of things that are very unsafe to feed to your axolotl. I remember actually when I first got Toothless she was a rescue people who I got her from they told me that they feed her bits of steak and pork and chicken. Um, I didn't really know if that was safe or not so I never fed it to her but after looking into it even more 
it is not safe to feed them any kind of mammal meat or like poultry either. Feeding them a lot of like mammal meat and stuff can cause obesity and like organ failure. I remember seeing a lot of people who feed like chicken heart or like stuff like that to the XLL. I don't know why, but that's not good either. And also it's not a good idea to feed them things like mealworms or crickets and stuff like that either. Honestly, I don't think it's a good idea to feed them any insect that's like not worms. <laughs> um, because they can't digest exoskeletons, so yeah. And as well as like fish as well, like goldfish and stuff like that. Not a good idea as a feeder fish. Uh, you can feed them guppies as feeder fish occasionally, but they're also they're not very good at catching them. <laughs> but also, if you do feed them guppies, you have to make sure to remove the guppies from the tank. If the exiles don't eat them within like 20 minutes or so, because the guppies could nip them. Feeder fish just like probably not a good idea. But what you can do is you can feed them healthy food like earthworms is the best thing I think to feed axolotls. Rapeshi grub pie is also very good for them. Uh, axolotl pellets is good as well. Also you can feed them frozen bloodworms and frozen brine shrimp as a treat. So basically anything that's not probably like those things best to not feed it to them. Next is don't put your axolotl in an uncycled and unfiltered fish tank. I talk about this a lot. If you don't know what it is and this is your first time hearing about it, it's very important that you do a lot of research about the nutrient cycle. Um, this is basically a process you have to do in a fish tank before you put any fish in there. You have to basically build up beneficial bacteria to make the water safe for the fish. You can't just put them with all the axolotl. Basically you can't just get a tank Fill it up with tap water and just put your exolol in the same day because they could die either from the chlorine if you don't use any dechlorinator or from a chemical imbalance in the water uh, like a buildup of ammonia could kill them or cause like ammonia burn and stuff like that. Now I don't really like explaining it because I'm not very good at <laughs> explaining it and it's a lot to explain so I will link uh, either some videos about it or some articles about it so you can read through it. I feel like it's just a lot easier to, to actually read through it. Maybe one day I'll make a whole video about it but um, basically you will need a master test kit or you can test your water at a, a pet store but I recommend getting a master test kit. It involves testing your water to keep an eye on your water parameters. We do this because basically when we have aquariums they're a small you know tank of water where toxins can develop quickly and spread throughout the whole tank quickly so if we don't go through the process of cycling our aquarium so we can break down those toxins we could kill our aquatic animals and it might be a bit confusing at first if you're new to learning about the nutrition cycle but trust me it's completely worth it for the benefit of your axolotl's health. I do think that the best way to help cycle a tank quickly is to find someone locally who already has a fish tank that's set up and fully cycled and has been for a long time and use some of their filter media and put it into your tank. This can help cycle your tank much faster. So I think it's a good idea to keep it under the parameters for a bit, but it makes things a lot easier in my opinion. That's what I do if I get a new fish tank. I just use filter media from my old fish tank, so I don't have to go through the full process again. And of course, filtration is always a must-have in aquariums. Um, axolotls don't need to have powerful filters because too much flow can stress them out. So I like to use a sponge filter in my axolotls tank. These are pretty good. They have low flow and easy to use. Please don't put your axolotl in an uncycled, unfiltered fish tank as they do unfortunately have a very high chance of dying or being very stressed or getting sick. But do research about the nutrition cycle and make sure your tank is fully cycled before you put an axolotl in it and that you have filtration. And the next one is don't let your tank overheat. Axolotls are cold water animals and where they live in the wild, well there's not many of them left now, but where they did live in the wild was in a lake in Mexico where the temperature stayed only around 10 degrees or under. So when I say cold water, they're cold, cold water. Goldfish are cold water too. However, goldfish can like handle the water being a bit higher sometimes. Like during the summer when the water is a bit higher, it doesn't really bother them. But if it was high all the time, that wouldn't be very good for them. But axolotls, they really don't like it to be high like at all. Even just temperature fluctuating can stress them out. So it's really important that you try to keep your tank like under 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I need to find out what that is in Fahrenheit. Okay, that's 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Which which can be quite difficult if you live in a country where it's really warm. Um, so make sure you always have a thermometer so you can keep an eye on the temperature. And if you're struggling with the temperature a lot, then it might be a good idea to invest in a chiller. Now unfortunately these are quite expensive, so if you can't afford a chiller, and you know you're gonna struggle with temperature, then unfortunately axolotls might not be the best pet for you because it's a really not a good idea to have them living in a high temperature tank all the time. Another thing you can do though is to install a fan above your tank. You can actually get proper aquarium fans that go above your tank, um, but also you can just get like a cheap fan and kind of 
aim it at the tank. I've seen people do that and that actually works surprisingly really well to cool down the tank. Now for me, I live in a pretty cold area of my country. Um, so usually my temperature is fine, but occasionally during summer it might get a bit high. Usually for me, it's enough for me to just do a water change and that fixes it, but that might not be the same if you live in a really warm country. Potentially adding frozen water bottles to your water might help. However, I don't really recommend this all the time. This can also cause fluctuations in the water temperature, which might just stress them out more. So really it's better to get a fan or a chiller. If you live in a high temperature tank for too long, this can really stress them out. It can lower their immune system, which makes them uh, easier to get sick and stuff. So you really don't want that to happen. And that's all I've got for this video. Now, obviously, uh, there's still probably more to learn. I have made other axolotl videos if you want to watch those as well. There is a lot to learn when it comes to getting an axolotl. But I really hope this video helped you. Um, and if you like this one and want me to do more of these, feel free to let me know on what animal you'd like me to do next. So yeah, I hope this could give you a little good intro on your axolotl. And if you are getting one soon, I wish you good luck and do a lot of research as well. Make sure you look into nutrient cycle. Very important. Uh, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!